So you know the company, we are long term. At the end, what we care is about the, the valuation and how we could expand over the time. So to a certain extent, I will say the fact that the market is a little bit done is maybe opening a new opportunity for us to continue to expand and maybe do m and You're hardly a startup. You're very much an <laughs> advanced company. But there was a warning in the startup universe from Sequoia Capital, which has its finger just about in every pie when it comes to some of the big technology names. And the warning was that this is a crucible moment, effectively a melting pot that will change a lot of companies and their futures. And the, the strategy from this company was that you should cut back. You should look at your cash burn. You should be very conservative. And as you mentioned, m and are we now looking at a view where those that are sitting on capital that are stronger can make those acquisitions, companies that you possibly couldn't touch before because they were overvalued? I think so. I mean, it's um, having, the, having the cash on one hand and having the scalability on the other hand is opening a new avenue for companies like us to continue to expand and, you know, maybe consolidate part of the market. Well, you've given a hint a couple of times there about M and A and consolidation market. What, what are you up to? Where are you? What, who are you going to buy? <laughs> you know, if you look at the three sectors of the economy, we are serving manufacturing, life sciences, and infrastructure and cities. All of them are having, you know, great opportunity for us to expand because the virtualization is still at the early days. But if you look at the last 12 or 18 months, I would say life sciences. And the mainstream market, you know, the solution for the mid-sized company, really this is where we are seeing the momentum. Yeah, let me just ask you a very generic question. There is a lazy assumption out there, and you would have seen this as well as, well as Karen and I, and Karen's done a lot of work on this, well, about valuations in the United States compared with valuations in Europe, appreciation of technology and growth in the US versus Europe as well. And the fact of the matter is, the lazy assumption is US investors appreciate growth way more than European investors, and that's why their companies are valued more. Well, funnily enough, that's why their companies have fallen more aggressively than European companies on the way down. So just to remind some of our viewers, it is a double-edged sword. But, it, but in terms of that assumption, Pascal, is that right? Uh, do we not appreciate growth here in Europe? More and more, I will say. But you are right. I mean, uh, each time I'm discussing with US investors, we spend a lot of time to discuss about the growth, the strategy, the positioning, the competitive edge. And with a European investor, it's much more about, you know, the profitability, the cash flow, the reinvestment policy. But we see more and oh, more. That, that, for once, I'm more proud of the European investor then. In fact, we're looking at what, what you mean? We're looking at balance sheet fundamentals like companies make money? Extraordinary. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. No, no, no. But I think at the end, you need both, right? Yeah. <laughs> you need, and especially if you want to be long term, you need the cash and you need a strategy, right? Can I bring up the metaverse? Uh, a few months ago, we were talking about your company actually being a metaverse company. I sat back and went, really, that's not my perception of what the metaverse is. I was quite stunned. And then, of course, Emmanuel Macron, uh, in the recent election, he was talking about potential to lead in the metaverse. But he now, on the back of a tech route, it almost feels as though metaverse is a bad word. No one wants to associate with it because, you know, you've seen such a big sell-off in that sector. What's your view? Is the metaverse done now? Are we, are we moving past it a bit? It's not the new concept when you think about it. Uh, we started 40 years ago by digitaliz digitalizing the object, virtualizing the object, and we are creating the content for the metaverse. But I think there is one mistake we should avoid, which consider the metaverse being a parallel world. It has to be connected with the real world. And what we do at the SO system, we put a plus between the virtual and the real. That's what the metaverse is about. So just remind me what metaverse is again. It's just augmented reality, yeah? No, it's not only this. It's how the web is becoming 3D. Yeah, okay. right. That's well, which what is what you guys do for a living. So that yes. works, doesn't it? Yeah. You, 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 you wrote the book on CAD, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> OK.